Do you like Prime Minister Modi? I I don't like him to be honest with you. Your name is Mazhar Farooqi. Are, are you anti BJP? Well, I am. Are you funded by the Muslim is extremist? I I don't think I've voted for a Muslim candidate ever in my life. Why do you hate Indians so much, and why do you hate BJP so much? Yeah, because I've done nothing wrong. The entire Indian media portrays you in a negative light. Well, this is a this is a blatant lie. You know, I mean, and the media, Indian media, has like you know, spinning a, a narrative which is completely wrong. Because you are busy putting Indians, our poor expats, in jail. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. So, hi there, guys. This is Loy from LoyMesita.com. Who is Loy Mesita and Think Personal Branding? I have with me a superstar, Shahrukh Khan, who is live. He's in disguise. So, you might not know him, but let me tell you who he is. Or rather, let me ask, uh, let me ask him who he is. Yes, uh, uh, can you please tell the viewers who you are? What is your name and what do you do? Well, I'm certainly not Shahrukh Khan. I wish I was. Um, <laughs> But my name is Mazhar Farooqi. I'm a journalist uh, in Dubai. Um, I've been working in Dubai since 2005, and uh, I guess I'm the only investigative journalist in this country. So yeah, that's me. Okay. Full disclosure: uh, before we move forward, I have known Mazhar Farooqi for many, many years. Uh, that is, I think, uh, when I had a little bit of hair. No, no hair. Okay. So I've known Mazhar for a couple of years. He is my friend. I respect him. So let's get that out of the way. And yes, there are many issues that Mazhar doesn't agree with me. And there are many issues I don't agree with Mazhar. But that does not mean we cannot be friends. We are still friends. We respect each other. Yes, we agree to disagree. And I asked him to come for this interview and he agreed to it. So this is the disclosure part. I will be asking Mazhar a series of 15 questions. Timestamps will be put down below. So Mazhar, let's quickly get into it. These are the questions. So question number one is, uh, just give uh, the viewers a introduction about you. Uh, you have someone there? It's okay? No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So give an introduction about yourself. So how many years have you been a journalist? Well, I've been in this profession since uh, 1991. So it's a long time. Okay. I, I started very early. I was uh, uh, like, you know, still in college when I ventured into journalism. So this is my ninth job with a newspaper. I have worked across newspapers uh, in India, like the Times of India, and the Hindustan Times, and Pioneer, and a couple of other publications which are like not in the same league as these ones. And then in 2005, I moved to Dubai to work with Gulf News, and I've been working with them since 2005. Uh, it's it's been a fascinating journey uh, to be uh, uh, to work in Dubai and to do the kind of journalism that people think is not possible in this country. So it's, I, I quite like uh, raising the bar. Uh, it has put me in, in situations, uh, awkward ones, and uh, and some uh, not so like pleasant ones. But my resolve remains firm. 
and I continue doing what I think uh, is the right thing. Okay, um, uh, that sentence you said, uncomfortable ones and uh, you know strange ones. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, I've got like multiple lawsuits against me. Uh, like uh, I, I, I lost, 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 lost even count of the number of lawsuits I have. Uh, about thirty or forty legal notices, and uh, and and a bunch of uh, uh, court cases. So. The company so, so why, uh, why aren't you in jail if you have so many court cases against you, lawsuits? Yeah, because I've done nothing wrong, and and eventually most of these court cases collapse, uh, like uh, when when they go before the before the judge. So, so what what we do? We do our work with diligently, and we we wait, wait our stories. So, and and I know that if I've done nothing wrong, the case will collapse. Although defamation laws in the country are very strict, uh, even if you even if you prove what you've written is true, you can still be in jail. But thankfully, I've managed to stay out of it. Uh, I've been okay. in in prison once. Uh, you're you're sure th you're, you're sure this is not a jail, right? Right now, I'm not interviewing from jail. No, of course right? not. I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay, um, uh, just a quick uh, this thing. Uh, how many years you've been with Gulf News again? Uh, Fifteen years now. 15 years. And uh, have you won any awards in UAE? Yeah, I've won, I've won quite a few awards, um, including the the one by the Sharjah government for investigative journalism. So they had this award only once, and I won it in the inaugural year. Uh, okay. so it came at $7,000, which is uh, you know, which was quite helpful. And okay. then um, the thing was, it was given by the Crown Prince of Sharjah. That okay. was... Uh, and uh, then there, there were the awards that I got uh, internationally and locally. Okay, so tell me about uh, India. Have you received any awards from India? Yeah, yeah, many of them. Uh, in fact, uh, I was flown to India a couple of times just to, uh, you know, to get these awards. And I got awards from the the Army Chief of India. And the award is generally given by the President of India, but there was an uh, emergency in uh, in Delhi. President do so the president couldn't do it. So, so, it so which which back. year is this? Which year is this? Uh, this was I think two thousand eighteen, and then there was another one in two thousand ten or twelve. I can't remember. And then there were the uh, like you know few. Okay. So, what about internationally? I have the, I have the, internationally, yeah, uh, the one that I got most recently was uh, was last month was called the Trace Prize for Investigative Journalism. That was a big one because I was competing with 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 world's biggest newspapers. So for a newspaper based in Dubai to be even nominated for this award is a big thing, uh, because my competition was with the biggest newspapers in the world. Uh, uh, so, but I got a merit award, uh, which was quite heartening. Uh, it was function was held in Washington, and uh, I could join only by Zoom because of the lockdown. Otherwise, I might have flown to the US and. Okay, and, and got the award personally, so I missed that chance. So <laughs> hopefully next time, inshallah. You were showing something on the wall. What 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 was that? You're pointing something at the wall. Well, these are some of the one that I that I that I have there. But there there are uh, uh, yeah. So there's one by the army chief here. There's one by the uh, by the council of Sharjah. There's one by the uh, and there were other one from uh, war for Australians and okay and, okay. Uh, but there are quite a few actually. These are. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. So, you, so you are a legit, you are a legit investigative journalist. Okay, you're not just a, a puppet that is picked up by one newspaper. So I wanted the viewers to know that. Okay, I will share the links and I'll share the photographs uh, when I edit this video. Now, here are my questions to you. Okay, the first question, the big question that people have, and uh, many of my friends who are working with the BJP. Okay, they have told me you are anti-Hindu. They have told me you're anti-Indian, anti-Hindu, anti-BJP. And it seems the entire Indian media, the entire Indian media portrays you in a negative light because you're busy putting Indians, our poor expats, in jail. Okay? So why? my question to you is, one is please address this statement. You're anti-Indian, anti-Hindu, anti-BJP. Why do you hate Indians so much? And why do you hate BJP so much? Well, this is a this is a blatant lie, you know. I mean, of course, I don't like the policies of BJP, but not liking BJP doesn't mean that you're anti-India. Like, which is why I'm I'm concerned about what's happening there. So I speak up my mind. 
So that that point is wrong. That being anti BJP doesn't mean that you are anti India. I love my country. I love my country more than uh, many people around. Uh, a lot of my friends uh, have are planning to move out of the country, but I I stay put. Uh, so that 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 thing is is wrong. Like all my friends are uh, like you know largely Hindus, and uh, all my neighbors are Hindus. We have excellent relationship with them. And the third assertion that you made, the entire media is against me. What are you talking about, uh, Loy? You know the Mumbai press uh, press club issued a statement in my favor. So only a couple of rag sheets. Okay, uh, could you give, could sheet. you give me the name of the newspaper again? Which newspaper supports you? They are not newspapers. The one, the one that when you say that the entire Indian media is portraying me, so that statement is, is completely wrong, because only two newspapers, and I don't call them newspapers, I call them rag sheets, because they are backed by by the RSS, something called Pop oh, India. Okay, for the benefit India. for the benefit of the viewers, what is RSS? So RSS is the is the is the right wing organization. So and they they want to make India into a Hindu Rashtra. So they draw their uh, inspiration from Hitler Hitler, uh, and and they just like Hitler had a German supremacy. So they also believe in the supremacy of the of the Indian of the of the Hindu community. Okay, so, so you're not you're not anti Indian. That's what you said. Of course uh, not. Are, are you anti BJP? Well, I am, uh, and and as a see, that is the beauty of the Indian, Indian democracy. Mm. Like you know, you can. The Constitution of India allows me the freedom to like a party and not like a party, right? Okay. So I don't like BJP's policies, you know. So, but had I been a non-Muslim and I would have said the same thing, it would have been fine. Okay, give me uh, give me one policy of BJP that you don't like. Give me one which you think is wrong. Well, uh, the the handling of the of the coronavirus pandemic, the the uh, a relationship with, with our neighbors. Like you know, we had some fantastic relationship with our neighbors. Look mm. what is happening. Look what's happening with China, with Sri Lanka, with with Bangladesh. You know, even countries like Nepal are not happy with us. And and the growth of India, like you know. So, is this the fault of the BJP or is this the fault of the Indian government? Well, Indian government is at the moment ruled by the BJP, right? Okay. So, so like you know. So, uh, let me understand this. So, you are supporting China for attacking India during the the border. Of so course not. How can how can I how can I support China for? But it pains me to see my our soldiers being killed, and uh, like you know. And the media, Indian media, has like you know spinning a, a narrative which is completely wrong. So, yeah. Okay. So now, whom do we trust in terms of the media? Whom do you recommend that you read about at least? Okay, you saying, okay, these these people are giving false. Is there any publication that you recommend people should read to get a fair view? Well, I, the best would be to read neutral publications uh, which don't have any vested interest. So of course, if you read the Chinese media or the Pakistani media or the like, you know, pro-government Indian media, so they won't give you a correct picture. So I mean, now with the because of the technology, internet, you have access to a to BBC, to the Guardian, to the Washington Post, to the New York Times, and these are credible publications. Even in India, there are many uh, like, you know, big newspapers uh, which which give out credible stories. So, so I, you, I read so them. So what you're saying is read all the papers and then form your own opinion. Is that what you're yeah, trying absolutely. to say? And most importantly, use your common sense. For God's sake, you know, look at the blunders made by the government, whether it is demonetization or the GST or the NRC, you know, all of these are like, you know, disasters. Okay. Uh, so give, me, some- yeah, give me your view about uh India's handling of uh, Kashmir, BJP's handling of Kashmir. Just give me a brief, make it short. What do you think? Was it handled well? Not handled well? Of course, not handled well. I mean, I mean, the, it's been what like more than a year now. I mean, the entire state is in lockdown. People don't have the freedom to go out. Uh, and look at the massive mobilization of the army there. So, we, I think, the best way to to make Kashmiris make uh, feel a part of India. Would be to reach out to them, you know, put up industries there, 
I remember there was uh, when 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 the Article Three Seventy happened. So there was this big talk about uh, like investments coming from all over the world and most importantly from India. What happened to that? You know, uh, the entire uh, like state is still in lockdown. So it, it's quite sad. So okay. in order to win them, we should give them job opportunities. We should we should like you know woo them. Okay. That's Now uh, one last question about Kashmir before we move on to the next question. Uh, but there are a lot of people saying that. Uh, uh kashmiris are funded by muslims by uh, I- islamic uh, extremists of pakistan they want a separate state absolutely. and uh, yeah. so is that true is that false absolutely i mean of course pakistan has a vested interest in kashmir and and because we uh, you know we hit them so badly in a couple of wars uh, whether it is the 65 war or 71 war or the kargil war and then uh, again uh, you know bangladesh was carved out of india uh, out of pakistan so of course they have a grudge against us and they they have i mean look at what pakistan says i mean they they have kashmir up there and they manifesto so they they try to instigate trouble and uh, you know they do all of that we know that that's a fact okay now um here's a question that i had i had from some people your name is mazhar farooqi you are a muslim okay and right. you know there are many pakistani muslims so are you funded by pakistan or by the muslim is extremist because you're mazhar farooqi you know it's a muslim name it's a very pakistani name well uh, there, there are more <laughs> muslims in india than there are in pakistan so uh, you know so it's it's you know i mean it's, it's ridiculous to even ask this question that i'm funded by by pakistan or anyone like you know I have friends from various countries. So, Pakistan is also one of the, those countries. I mean, being in the in the UAE, uh, you have uh, like in our office, you have people from multiple countries. So, uh, like when you go out, you see people from different countries. So, so as I relate with people from the US or or from the Arab world, I also relate with people from Pakistan, especially because our our food. is similar and our language is similar so i might relate to a pakistani more than i might relate to a south indian but that's because only because of our language and our food habits and our like cultural but that's it like you know we don't have ideological similarities okay give me the name of one hindu indian one hindu but a big name who would endorse you and say you're you're a good man give me one big indian all of name. them i mean i i would say give me one indian name uh, who would uh, contradict me i tell <laughs> you, you <know. laughs> all right okay yeah. you got me that okay uh, my second question to you is why do you go around putting so many indian expats in jail because many uh, there is this narrative from my bjp friends that you're going around putting our poor indians in uh, uae in jail you just enjoy putting them in jail or getting them deported why well that again is 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 a is a fallacy because there are about 250 people uh who are in jail or deported or facing action because of my story and they are from all all nationalities and all backgrounds you know many of them are muslims by the way so the the people you're talking about is what happened is that there was a wave of islamophobia Uh, and this happened mostly during the lockdown when people were sitting at home and they had nothing to do so they were posting stuff on social media uh, like you know and and that's a crime in the uae like you, know, you can't uh, say bad words even if i say bad words again against any other religion christianity or hinduism or anything i will face consequences there have been instances of emiratis being put in jail like you know locals for abusing somebody's religion the law is fair and the people who who got deported or who were put in jail you know so this was because of their own doing you know i did not play any role in that i just reported it okay so i also more- i also got some screenshots i got some screenshots uh, which i don't have it now but where you're fighting with other people on twitter and you're also yeah. making fun of them so have you made fun of uh, hinduism so that is my question number one and second one well, is yeah. uh yeah please the the tweet that has been uh, shared around uh is in, in in which i am 
responding to one of the BJP leader. So he put up a tweet making fun of of Islam, right? Mm. So and I said, like you know, people who believe in in uh, in cow urine as a cure for mm. for coronavirus mm. are making fun of somebody else. Mm. So I said, Arani dies a thousand dead. That doesn't mean that I I I am making fun of Hinduism, mm. right? I mean, a lot of people don't believe that. I mean, nobody, no sane person would believe that that cow urine can cure coronavirus. <laughs> Do you believe that? Of course not. No. So if I say that, what am I making fun of Hinduism? Of course not. Okay. I just yeah. said that if you believe that that cow urine can cure coronavirus, you know. So they put up that tweet, and most of it, like you know, as they say, even the devil can quote from the holy book to suit his own and good. That's what happened with me. Okay. So they they quoted you out of context and put uh, put out tweets. So, okay, uh, there is also this claim by many people that you have plenty of FIRs. Now you will have to explain to me what is an FIR. There are plenty of FIR court cases against you uh, for being anti-Indian in India. Is this true? Is this false? And it seems the minute you step into India, you are going to be jailed. See, I, I don't know about that. I've not been to India for a while. Uh, that is because of the coronavirus pandemic. But yeah, but if I go to India, I'll find out, and you'll also find out whether I I go home safely or not. But yeah, it does uh, bother me uh, if there is a I don't see any grounds of of an FIR against me. FIR means a first information report, but any any lunatic can go and file a complaint against anyone. Uh, so j- just tell people what is an FIR? What does it stand for, and what is FIR it? FIR is a is means the first information report. So if you have a complaint against someone, you go to the police and lodge an FIR, which is the first information report. So so on what grounds would have any would anyone would have filed a FIR against me? I don't know, but it does concern me. Like you know, I mean, imagine you go back to your country, like you spend a vacation, and and then you are detained at the airport for some stupid FIR. So when, yeah. when was the last that you went to India? When was the last? I think I was in India around this time last year. Uh, okay, so nothing happened to you. You didn't get arrested. Nothing. No. Okay, and you're from which part of India? I'm from Lucknow, which is the the culinary capital of India. Okay, and of, uh, do people in Lucknow are they only Muslims or Hindus mix? Uh, what is it? Yeah, uh, Lucknow is a uh, is famous for something called the Ganga Jamni Tehzeeb. It's a very cosmopolitan uh, thing. Uh, the last ruler of Lucknow was a guy called Dawab Bajidulli Shah. So he promoted uh, the the secular uh, thing of Lucknow. Where Hindus and Muslims are mingled together. So there are Hindus in Lucknow. There are Hindus. Absolutely, yeah. Most of them are Hindus. Okay, Ma- Masar, are there any Hindus in uh, Lucknow? Are there any Hindus? Absolutely, yeah. All my neighbors are Hindus. All my friends are Hindus. Uh, I mean, okay. And uh, uh, like, w- when you went to Lucknow, I, I, do you have a police case, or are there people waiting to kill you, or oh, this anti-Indian no, has no. come back? I mean, they, everybody. They, Everybody loves me in Lucknow. Like you know, I mean, it's my hometown. I mean, I went to school there. I went to college there. I I spent like fifteen years of journalism in Lucknow. So uh, okay. So now my my next question to you is uh, uh, okay. Uh, just to answer the question, why are you putting Indian expats in jail? Why are you doing that? I'm not doing it. That's the thing. They went to jail because of their own doing. I just reported it, like I would have reported about the arrest of a Pakistani or an American or an Emirati or any other religion. I'm just doing my job. I did not report them. They went to jail because of their own thing. So people have been posting stuff on social media, and we have been also warning them that this is the law. Don't do this, please. The Indian Consulate has been warning. The Indian Ambassador has issued warning, but people are still doing it. So anyone who abuses, there's a strict law. Which is called the discrimination law uh, in the in, in the UAE. So a few days ago, as I said earlier, an Emirati was was prosecuted and and jailed and fined for ridiculing somebody's religion. So the law spares no one; like it doesn't distinguish. So so, the, uh, my, so, so UAE is fair for everyone. They even put an Emirati in jail. 
just recently, just a few days ago, I, I'm going to send you the link. Okay. Uh, uh, now, the Indian ambassador, you, you just mentioned Indian ambassador and Indian consulate. Are they also Muslims or are they Hindus? No, I, no. See, they are Indians, right? They are they Indians, be, okay. Yeah. So, uh, they, they support your work or they are against you, you know, because the narrative I'm getting nobody, is, you Muslim. Nobody is against me. You Muslim nobody versus... Nobody is against me. Nobody is against you. Nobody is against me. What happened was that, I'll give you one uh, instance. So, so, there was a chef, Indian chef, who was working in Dubai and he sent a horrendous message to a girl who was a law student in India. And the girl is Hindu, mind you. She's not Muslim anyone. So what does this girl do? So, so the and chef is Hindu or Muslim? The chef is Hindu, Indian. The chef is Hindu. He, okay. He sends a message to a Hindu girl okay. in India, mm. right? And in the message, he's saying that he's going to gang rape her, take out his, uh, like, you know, genitals. Okay. And, and, and I can't even tell you what he was, uh, what, what he said in that post. Mm. Horrible stuff. So what does she do? She files a complaint online and she writes to Gulf News, right? Mm. And what does what will Gulf News do when when it is reported to them? They'll ask me to look into it. Mm. So I called this girl and she said, "Look at this man. He has the audacity to send me messages." And she shared me those screenshots. Mm. So I called the 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 place where she where the chef was working, and they were also horrified. So they sacked him. So did they do anything wrong? Tell me. Yeah. You okay. Know, he, he, the, the the woman was a Hindu, right? Okay. So so, uh, so here's the thing: Have you put any Muslims in jail? Have you put any Muslims, or is it only you are attacking Hindus? Thing is, let me get this clear. I did not put. I don't. I don't put people in jail. I write stories, and okay. whatever happens is the fallout of of those those things. So yeah, I mean, I reported on on Hira Group, which is owned by Novera Sheikh. She is Supposedly, people compare her with, with the you know, with the wife of the Prophet Muhammad, like, you know, and oh. she's in jail since uh, yeah, uh, she 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 is a big personality, Ponzi. and she's Muslim. She, she's a Muslim. And she she was accused of running a Ponzi scheme, uh, which has left about half a million Indian Muslims devastated. Uh, so so I wrote about her, and now uh, like you know, she's in jail for almost two years now. Okay, so, of people do this. so we we the can agree idea. we can agree that you're not putting anyone in jail, but you're writing. So you also write about Indian Muslims. Yeah, absolutely. See, I don't. I when well, see when I write a story, I don't distinguish. With, I don't use the thumb rule of religion, right? Okay. I judge the story by its merit. Okay. So the, the story is good regardless of whether the perpetrators are. In Indian Muslims or Indian Hindus or Pakistanis or Russians or whatever. So the okay. story is good, I write it. Okay. And Fine. consequences be damned. All right. Now, the next one is um, this one was a latest story that came out. Okay. You wrote about uh, detained in Dubai. Okay. And then the narrative right. is see, here he is against expats who want justice. The poor, innocent victims, they want justice. And you're smearing uh, a savior. You're smearing a humanitarian personality who's helping poor expats. Can you please tell me why did you do that and give me your thoughts? Well, uh, in this case, particular the one that you're talking about, so a cabin crew along with a few others were caught uh, on, on suspicion of like, drug trafficking, which is a serious offense in Dubai. So the woman is in jail um, along with a few others and detained in Dubai comes up with stories in the Western media saying like, look, this woman is in a bad shape. She's got tonsillitis. She's starving. She can't make phone calls. She's suffering. She's driving on bread and jam. So I find this ridiculous because she is in a Barsha jail, which is like a five-star hotel. You know, she's getting good food. You know, She's got telephone access in four by seven. So so I was aghast. Like, how can someone put up something like this? And so we spoke to people who met this woman in jail and said she's absolutely fine. Even her own lawyer, the woman's own lawyer said that the woman has no problem. She's absolutely fine. 
So where is the story coming from? So that was my contention. So detained in Dubai, what they did was they they love bad mouth in Dubai. You know, they they take uh, for whatever reasons you know extreme uh, satisfaction in ridiculing Dubai. Uh, in this context, what they said was 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 uh, was uh, like you know a lie. So we we wrote about that. Okay, and. Um... The, the the main thing that I want to ask you is uh, where you paid money, where you paid money or where you asked, go and, you know, smear these people with false information or anything like that. Come on. I mean, we we, we get a fairly good salary. Uh, so we're content with that. And uh, I mean, I've been offered bribes many times, but, but not in this context. No one offered you money to and uh, or, why why was detained in Dubai removed from Twitter? Is it because UAE has uh, control over Twitter or uh, MBZ has control over Twitter? And uh, then obviously I was not removed from Twitter. I don't know why. Okay, but yeah, I wouldn't know. That is that is something that, that, that Twitter and and Radha Sterling would know. I have no idea. So okay. what it was was that she's account was suspended, and then they wrote a part where she was talking bad things about Dubai based on assumptions. And complete lies. So, so, so this, we, so, so, so this cabin crew, she is, she is not being chained to the wall and suffering and dying. Of course not. Absolutely not. You're, you're seen with your own eyes. See, I did not, I did not go and see her in jail, but I spoke to his, uh, to her lawyer. I spoke to her as recently as uh, yesterday. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Now, speaking about jail, um, since you have been in jail, not means you are arrested. Since you have <laughs> visited the jail. Is it so bad? Is it like such a horrific dungeon where people are suffering and dying? Because some people pour, put these graphic images, they are putting them so they get COVID and they suffer and die and they're eating just uh, bread and uh, sand. And uh, can, can you give me, you've been to jail, uh, you've seen jail, you've visited. Yeah, so, so Dubai jail uh, has had not a, a single case of coronavirus. There was a story about that. And the facilities are like five star. I mean, you've got libraries there, you've got canteens there, you know. So you've got air-conditioned room. So of course, the jail is a jail at the end of the day. But to to portray it as some kind of hellhole, that's what the newspapers wrote in the in British media, is is, is complete lie. So they're not hellholes. Of course, they, you are confined in a... But the facilities are good. They're better than probably the best in the world. Um, so... So that is a that's a complete lie where they say that uh, that she is uh, been like, you know. Okay, so we, we so we will agree on one thing that a jail is a jail. Okay, it's Absolutely, not it's yeah. not a five star accommodation, but there are some yes. wh which are tough conditions and some there are which are offering premium kind of services. Okay, fine. The next one that I want to ask you is. Are you getting paid big money, kind of special bonuses by uh, UAE government for putting false information or, you know, like maybe you're getting a Rolls Royce or maybe you're getting a five-star paid holiday or maybe some special <laughs> grants? I wish, I wish I would get something, but of course not. No, come on. I live okay. in a modest, uh, like a Sharjah apartment, you know. If I was living in Palm Jumeirah on a villa on seaside, then you could have probably asked that question. So and, and, and do you get paid? Was old. Do you get paid per article? Like, you know, you get, you put smear more, uh, this thing, uh, or you portray. No. You sure you don't get paid per article? Uh, like $100,000 or something? Uh, Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing doesn't work this way. <laughs> See, I'm a journalist. We, we get our salary like everybody else at the end of the month. Okay. So that is what we have. I mean, like, like, like anybody else, like we have loans and, and bills to pay and, and school fees to worry about and grocery expenses, all of that. So. Okay. Uh, my next question to you is um, the has anyone offered you money, money and incentives to write a story? Has anyone offered you or and or has anyone offered you money and incentives to remove a story? All the time. I mean, uh, I would say I, I can uh, say probably eight, ten times uh, in, in these years. So, yeah, people have come to to me with, with brand new iPhones which I had to return uh, to the office and then it was sent back. So one guy offered me a, a, a Land Cruiser for not writing a story. 
and then uh, twice i was offered 1 million dirhams uh, for not writing a story and and there were there been other instances where people have said like you know uh, actually come with money and uh, offered incentives and kind of sent feelers so 1 million to not put a story yeah twice oh and you have never ever taken anything not in little bit no. like as a, a, a thank you gift like someone says thank you just well yeah i mean when people come to the office and uh, like you know when they sometimes bring chocolates because uh, it's so not you that have accepted chocolates yeah so so not so we also tell a lot of positive stories like you know i have we have re- re- reunited about five moms with their with their mother with the kids who have with the standard other countries we have helped repatriate a lot of people we have helped uh, repatriate many um, there was still the time when about 31 indians were living in a bus for, for a lot of uh, days and we helped them send back so okay th- this nobody so, talks about you have helped people unite and repatriated indians hundreds of them just a few days ago I, uh, we we paid money from our own pocket to i, I shouldn't be saying the words you asked uh, uh, every day uh, you know someone just just calls me so i'm uh, we become like the one stop shop for uh, for anyone who's in distress so there are mothers uh, like I, i tell my family jokingly is that salman khan the movie called bajrangi bhaijan mm. in which he helped to reunite a, a, a child with her so, so is it some kind of program this is some kind of a uh, serial or something no no it's a movie it a, oh it's a movie it's okay So what does he do? In- so in that movie, he helped uh, reunite a child with his mother. The child was sent in Pakistan, and the mother had no hopes of seeing her away. The child was sent in India, and the mother was in Pakistan, and there was no hope of them being reunited. And Salman Khan does it. So I would have done it at, at least six instances. So you have done it even. Uh, see, th- this is not for you to be modest, but you have even spent money from your own pocket just to help people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, see, um, see, certain certain things are 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 not uh, limited to journalism. Like you know, this is something um, we are all human, and and what good is the money if it doesn't help uh, anyone? So, okay. so we we have been doing all of that, uh, like you know, helping almost on a daily basis. We we go out and try to impact somebody's life. Uh, all right, my next question to you is. If you are such a patriot, you said you 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 say you love India, correct? Now, if you are yeah. such a patriot, why aren't you working in India? Why are you working in UAE? That's a big question people have asked me. Well, that that's again a, a kind of a specious uh, argument because um, look at India, like you know, most of look at the UAE. A lot of people who are working here are Indians, right? So, like anybody else, I'm also a non-resident Indian. I got the opportunity to come to Dubai. I I came here. Mm. So of course I missed India. I go there every few days. I have worked in India, so I'm sure a lot of Indians would also so want to venture out, as they have moved to countries not just the UAE. They have moved to places like the USA or Canada or or Great Britain. So, okay. so being patriotic doesn't mean that you remain grounded with your, uh, like you know, in your country. Okay. Now my next question. Uh, this one is a sensitive one. um has anyone made threats to you to your family especially to your children well uh, there is some guy who calls me dutifully almost every day uh, and he's been doing it for almost a year he doesn't say much uh, but sometimes when he doesn't call i kind of miss him uh and there are there have been the campaigns on twitter uh, on where they have uh, threatened to kill me uh how my family uh, you know they have been do you have this screenshots or anything that you can share with me later on people oh, have actually they have and threatened they me from india they yeah. have threatened me threatened me uh, when i uh, when i as recently i just said i got a call from my from an unknown number and and they were saying like you know this quite a uh, uh, see i don't get rattled but of course you have a family and kids uh, then you are worried about their safety like uh, so some unity can go out and harm my family and they have said that in in their in tweets that your daughter is are on our list like you know you can share with me the tweet you have that tweet yeah 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 absolutely and they're okay. not just one they're like hundreds of those such tweets 
Okay. Uh, and the sad part is that most of the tweets are genuine people. Like you know, if they're not trolls, there are there there's a face behind those people. Really? So they, from the actual account? Yeah, actual actual account. And there are many tweets like this. Like you know. Okay. My next question to you is: uh, This one is uh, kind of tough, maybe. Can you give me one good thing about BJP? Okay, give me one good thing because BJP says you just hate them no matter what they do. Okay, no matter anything mm-hmm. they do, you just speak bad about. Can you give me one good thing about BJP? See, it's a very resilient party. So when they were down to like two seats and then to come to power, which is quite remarkable. So I I, I must give. Uh, the credit where it is due. So the the way they have managed to uh, like you know win with absolute majority, it is something that should be given credit to. Um, and the same goes for Mr. Modi also. Mm-hmm. I mean, whether people like it or not, but he has a connect which no other leader has with the community with with Indians. So he connects them to a level at a level which no but very few people can. So. I mean, he has that quality in him inherent, so which which I quite like, uh, to be honest. Uh, okay, I, I don't agree with his policies. I I don't uh, like uh, the the thing that he has done, but he has a connect with people. Okay, is there any BJP person who you don't need to give his identity or whatever that they agree with you or at least a few things, or you can at least talk to them uh, like civil or the entire BJP is against you. No, of course not. I mean, when I when I go to when I go to my hometown Lucknow, lot of my friends uh, are uh, party functionaries in the BJP. Like you know, and we sit around, we have a chat, and when you go out for dinner, and we have fun, and we joke around. So, so it's not like you you're on the BJP hit list or anything like that. No, of course not. Of okay, course not. and okay. Do you agree with me if I say that there are some BJP people who are doing good for others? Can Absolutely. We? Okay. Yeah, it's not that that everyone in the, in the BJP or is bad or or everybody in the Congress is the same, you know. Mm. So, so there are people of all kinds. It takes all kinds to. Uh, okay, you know, and, to and, and if it's not too personal, if it's not per, which party do you support? I I don't know if I'm allowed to ask that. Is there any party you support or? Uh, um, it, it's it's a difficult question. Like you know. Uh, and I, I will be very honest with you. I, I wouldn't lie. Uh, I have not voted for BJP, and uh, we no, voted for. Can you say? Can you say that again? You have. I have not voted for the BJP. Oh, you have not ever. voted. Okay, you are not voted for yeah. the BJP. Okay, yeah. fine. So, so I mean, I have not voted. I have not, you know, been part of the Indian election process in many years now okay. because I've been away from the country since two thousand five. But when I was in India, so. I voted for Samajwadi Party and Congress and Mayawati. Although some people I know uh, voted for Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee when he was the Prime Minister of India, okay. because and they were these Muslims, mm. you know, and because he was, uh, uh, you know, he Lucknow was his constituency, and he was the Prime Minister of India. So many Muslims, and they kind kind of liked him. Okay. So uh, now here's another thing: being a Muslim, would you only vote for a Muslim candidate, or is there a possibility you can vote for a Hindu candidate? Absolutely. I mean, I I, I don't think I've voted for a Muslim candidate ever in my life. Ah, okay, that's surprising. And uh, now here here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing: do you like <laughs> do you like Prime Minister Modi? Do you like him or you don't like him? I I don't like him to be honest with you. Why? Why you don't like him? Well, I, I don't like him for the simple reason that uh, I don't agree with his policies. Okay, give me one policy you don't agree with him. One one policy. All of these policies, like you know, his handling of the coronavirus pandemic, you know, the sudden lockdown, which allowed, which which caught so many people stranded. You know, mm. look what is happening. Among to the migrant labors, you know, mm. they had to walk for God, uh, like you know, for hundreds of kilometers, and many okay. died on the way. The handling of the the demonetization thing, and and the biggest thing uh, is is the communal divide that has come, in, that happened to India. When I go to my hometown, I I see th- I see things changing, like you know, uh, so that 
that's a that's the biggest casualty uh, that has happened under Mr. Modi's regime, mm. uh, and that's quite sad. Okay, Mazhar, if if not Modi, if not Modi, then what other option do we have? Who are the who is the other leader? Who do you vote for? I mean, is there any other leader that we can talk about? Because this again, uh, this again is a is a like you know uh, Indian democracy. I mean, you can vote for anyone. It's not that. This this logic that is put forward by people that if not Modi then who it doesn't work like you know you you who who would have thought that people like Devi Gowda or Chandrasekhar or I K Gujral would become the prime minister of India you know even a few until a few years ago who would have thought that Mr Modi would become the prime minister of India so okay. anyone can become the prime minister of India mm-hmm. and uh, and the, that's the beauty of the Indian democracy that you. You have the right to decide, uh, as an Indian citizen, you know, who you want to lead the country, and could be anyone. Okay. Uh, what do you think is the most important pressing issue for India right now? I think that there are two issues at the moment. Uh, of course, one is the was the, the rising unemployment and the rising uh, hatred and divide uh, among people. So these okay. two issues uh, are at the top of my. I'm sure there would be more, but that. That's something that concerns uh, many people. Okay, I have last two more questions. Okay, before we wind up, uh, now you being a uh, expat, you being an expat uh, from India, you're here in UAE. Now, is UAE a perfect country? I I need to know because uh, everyone, you know, obviously there are two sides. I've been in uh, UAE for forty years. I admire UAE, where UAE has to be admired. I do point out certain issues because I could not say that when I was in the country, which is obvious because we are a guest. We need to respect our host. You can't go around bad mouth, okay? But now, obviously, I understand the limitations. Let's be honest. I understand the limitations. But is UAE a perfect country? See, there is never an ideal world, uh, Loi. Like you know, I mean, the ideal world can probably exist in in the in the heavens. So yeah. every country, whether it is the UAE or the Mecca or Canada or first world country, they have their shortcomings. Mm. But of course, UAE does very well on various indexes. Mm. Like you know, as as a citizen of the country, what do you want? You want safety, you want law and order, you mm. want good environment, you want good infrastructure, and you want a good, uh, you know, living standards. Good quality so of life. Good quality of life, right? Mm. That is what I get. I don't worry about what's happening uh, elsewhere. So mm. if, if if these basic thumb rules are taken care of, that the road that I drive doesn't have potholes and is, everything is good, the, like you know, if I am walking with my family in the middle of the night, I won't be mugged or attacked, or mm. there won't be anyone like you know uh, making obscene remarks. At, so you you can go out. You have been here. You can go out at two o'clock in the night, and you'll be absolutely safe. Mm. So, and of course, the standard of living and the call and quality of life there is is very good. So on those indexes, it does very well. Mm. So. Of course, there is always scope of improvement. I'm sure uh, UAE will also uh, be there. Mm. And w- the last, the last, uh, this this one, I'll give it to you. Is there any message you would like to give um, Indians and the viewers who are watching? Um, you know, I I leave it to you. Give your final message if you had anything to say to everyone. Including, if you want to say something to the BJP, <laughs> including even if you want to say, well, I, I don't think my my message uh, counts because I'm not a celebrity or, you know. No, still, still, and I I will forward so, you to a BJP friend of mine. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so the thing is, give, yeah, that I want to say is that first of all, I'm not anti-India. I'm not anti-Hindu. I'm not. I'm not anti-anyone. Like you know, mm. I'm just a journalist who does his job. As mm. anybody else does, does, does their job. Mm. I mean, had I been a banker, I would have been doing the same thing. But because the nature of my job involves investigative journalism, so I do those kind of stuff. And sometimes, you know, people who are, who get caught in the crosshairs of this of my work are Indians. You know, which is you know, so it's not that mean that I that I'm against Indians or I'm against any any particular religion or anyone. So, okay. So, all right, Mazhar, thank you so very much, uh, you so much. for for taking uh, your time. I really appreciate. 
uh, I will be putting uh, an email or uh, anything if people want to get in touch with you and clarify, verify any other information. And I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you take care. Thank you.